This is my third and final CV Builder using React following the Odin Project CV Builder assignment. If you want to check out the other two CV Builders, they'll be linked down below along with a link to the Odin Project and the live version of this CV Builder if you want to view them as well. I did live stream about 80% of this CV Builder. There was a few times my internet cut out, so I apologize for that. But it was really fun getting to know a few of my viewers and just chatting away. And it was quite nice coding live. It was a bit of a struggle at times. If that's something you're interested in doing, you know, coming along saying hello or just watching me struggle and question my entire life, that's fine. Just hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and you'll be notified the next time I go live. So why did I build three different rap versions? I just wanted a little bit more practice with the rap, try and get better, try to understand it a bit more. For the rest of this video, I'll be jumping over the computer where I'll go over a live example, talk about the good points and then the bad points, and then finally talk about which of the three designs is my favorite. So without being said, let's dive over to the computer. So this is the live version. I'll have this link down below, as I said earlier. First up, we've got the title. Then we've got this little section for customization. There's this drop down where you can select different elements of the CV, which you can personalize. So you can update the font. I've put in a few different fonts there, font sizes, bold italic underline, and also a color picker. So I thought that was a really good way to do it. I'll touch a bit more on this later. Then we've got this kind of outline border and that's all the CV. So when it gets printed, that's what's gonna get printed out. This top section is all your personal information. So your name, email address, phone number, and websites. So that could be like your personal website, GitHub, LinkedIn, whatever. And you just click this add button and it adds in multiple websites. You click these tick buttons and it finishes the edit. So name's Craig, click OK there. And then you've got this pencil icon, which allows you to go back and edit it. If I select name here, it's Roboto. We could put it as inter and up the size to 48, for example. The color, let's go white. And it edits really nicely, I think. Then you've got this about me section. So you could edit this and say like personal statement here. Personal statement, I don't know what else people call it nowadays, but you got your personal statement and you just, this is a text area. So you can type in here, the enter button actually works. So the white space is remembered, which is very nice. Then you've got skills again, edit if you want Microsoft Excel. If you don't type anything though, it will come up as no value. So you've got to make sure you type something. And then you also get this little bullet point. It's display flex. So they'll go across and then onto a new line when there's too many. You can also delete these icons if you want. So that's the same with the website. We click OK and then we can click delete there. But we got the projects up next. So project title, project link and a description of your project. Just keep adding it. It's a two column grid. Uh, it just the add what button works quite nicely. You can delete these sections if you've added too many. Korea again, very similar. You've got job title, you've got date company and job description the date unfortunately is just a text area so you can write the date how you want i did want to have kind of two date inputs but rendering it got a little bit difficult so i just went with the one text area there and again add it you get your second job the job so on education follows the exact same principle there you've got your subject dates or classification or grade the institute of your education and a description add your references how many you want again two column grid there and delete them if you've got too many and then finally this little plus button at the bottom is to add more sections so you can add in the personal info about me skills projects career education references all those are already there and then there's this custom input which is i would say a semi-custom input really it's not fully customizable you can add in a section header so that would be like this reference bit here or you could add in a subtitle which is it's a bit bold and stands out a little bit more then you can say columns and how many inputs per column so we'll say two columns with an three inputs click add and then there we go so there, that's our subheaders it's a little bit bolder and then you can just type in here within each section you can also delete it so this big red bin will delete the section. You can also move up and down a section using the arrows, which was quite nice. Something that I hadn't done on any of my other builds. The print button loads up the print automatically. And as I said, it's just going to print off that thing within 
the border. Again, if you don't want a section, just delete it from the CV builder. And then finally, you've got the footer being linked to YouTube, my website, and to the Auden project. A little bit of a transition. It scales to, I think, 1.1, which is quite nice. So what do I like about this CV builder? Well, there's quite a few things. I do like this section along the top, but I will touch on it a little bit more slightly later because there's something I don't like. You may have just seen it. I like being able to edit everything live. It, it looks great. The plus button at the bottom, I thought that was great. I quite like that. You can also just click off the modal. The modal's, uh, oops, wrong button there. The modal comes up when you click the plus button. That's just grays everything out slightly and you can click it and it hides it. So that is great as well. I do like these input editables. So all the inputs here, there's two files. There's the input editable and the input editable delete. The delete ones are for the lists like the skills and the websites. For the inputs, I've got a few. So there's a state in the inputs. There's a state in each component. So a component here is like this main section, the about me, the skills, projects, career, education references and this custom one they're all their own components and then you've got a component for the input editables and the input editable delete so this when it renders we'll just type it again that's still the input editable i've got a editable kind of state which is true or false if it's true then that means it's in this state when it's false it means it's in this state and i've got some props where i say it's h1 h2 h3 paragraph or anchor and that helps with the styling now a few things that i don't like as you can see as i'm scrolling around there's a lot of hover animations going on i don't like how when i hover it brings up both of them so i'm hovering over this component which is why i've got this delete move up and down i think that's fine but this edit and the title i wish only they would hover when i was actually over the element so that's something I'd like to look into a little bit more. I just couldn't figure it out straight away because it could be a bit confusing, like which one do I need to edit? The personalized section, there is a bit of an issue. So if I just reload the page, you can see I've got the primary color as the default, but it's also got font and font size here. Doesn't really work for the primary color. But if I go off of it and back onto it, it does go back to blank. So maybe a little bit more work could be done there. I do like how these update as well, actually. So they know, they, they take the CSS variables and check and update the inputs if needed. So I thought that was pretty cool. Other things that I don't like, the up and down, they work quite nicely, I will admit, but I kind of wanted to do a draggable thing here. It just was a little bit beyond me. So maybe that's something I could do in the future where I could drag a section around and then place it but i'm not upset with the up and downs they work pretty well another bad thing that i'm not too happy with is the amount of repeated code so i'll just pop over to that now within each of the components there's a few functions where i just repeat so input change that kind of updates these inputs the state within each component so like your title your company dates whatever that's repeated throughout and i wasn't too sure if I could push it into the main app because it's using the state within each component. So I was a bit iffy about that, but there is a lot of repeated code. So it could do with some tidying up, I think. So input changes in all of them. Add to array is mostly in them and same with delete from array. There's a few things that could be improved there. Similarly with the input editable, there's a lot of if statements. So as I said, I've got this props type where it's say H2, H3, paragraph, anchor link. There's just a lot of ifs. And then similarly, if it's editable and what type of input I want. So it could be text, email, or text area. And that's the same thing in the delete. It's basically a copy of the input editable. So a lot of duplication, which probably is a little bit redundant. And then finally, there is a bit of a bug going on where let's just say um, MSXL. I'll just fill this in briefly, add in a few more of these HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, for example. And then I'll just say SQL here. If 
I delete this section, so the JS one, it doesn't really remember that the value was false or editable. And it goes to the same state as before. I think that's, oh, I think it is okay, but it's a bit annoying for a user, say if they create a list and then they're like, I want to rearrange them. So you delete an element, it kind of forgets what's there. Again, if I delete this, it will go to SQL, but it didn't remember that it was already editing. And that's the same thing on these kind of projects and all the input sections here. So project weather app, for example, uh, let's just click that. Oops, google.com for, because Google tells you the weather, weather app. Okay, so I've made this input. It looks fine. I don't want this second one here. Oops, nearly deleted the entire section. I will show you that as well. Delete that, and it's gone to this editable state. It does remember some of the inputs. That's fine, but not ideal. As I said, I can delete an entire section here. Boom, that works fine. I was really impressed about adding and deleting sections. So I'll go over that briefly now. What I've done, I've created a few states in the app. I've got the options. So that's personal info about me. Those are all the ones I could do. I've got the current view which loops through on load and it loads all the inputs and then components that's to do with this component option so when i select it it will add in one of these now out of the three designs i would say this is my favorite one the first one it worked very nicely but it was rather basic just with the side by side view the second one i did like using router dom i probably need a little bit more experience on that because i have had issues trying to publish it to github it doesn't really recognize the correct links so there's some work that needs to go on there and this one i enjoyed it because well i put a lot of time into this and with the live stream it really made it enjoyable so although there's quite a few things i'm not too happy with overall i think this is the best out of the three i would probably do something with the colors down here there's no like standard color. There's this dodgy grayish purple and then there's purple here. Just a little bit of more standardization would have been better. So let me know in the comments down below what you think of this. Are there any improvements that you would make? And is this one your favorite or do you prefer one of the other two designs? Please let me know. If you have enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you'd like to see more, then please subscribe. Hope you all have a good day and I'll catch you later.